Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to make some low poly floating islands, but you can use today's technique to make some cliffs or floating platforms if you'd like as well. Uh, let's not waste any time and jump right in. Okay, let's begin. Go up to the Mesh Tools tab at the top, open that up, and down here we have something called Create Polygon. Click on that tool. I'm going to tap the space bar to go into the four panel view and then hover my mouse over the top view and tap it again. And how this tool works is you click on the viewport to lay down a point and you can keep clicking. By the time you get to three points, it'll make a polygon. But what we're going to do is keep clicking on the surface and draw out the top of our floating island. When you're done, press Q or enter. And now we can still adjust these points if we want to. I'm going to hold down my um, the right mouse button to get to Maya's marking menu and I'm going to choose vertex mode. Just going to move a couple of these points out a little bit. All right, let's go back to the perspective view now. Tap the spacebar and I'm going back into object mode right using that marking menu. And now what we want to do is um, give this polygon some thickness. So select your mesh. Open up the Modeling Toolkit, and here we have this Extrude button. We'll just use that. And now what I want to do is just pull this blue arrow down. And then I'm going to press R to go into the Scale tool. Drag that middle box in to create a taper for the bottom. All right. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to press Q, and then uh, go back to Object Mode and select my mesh. I'm also going to turn off the grid. And it looks pretty good. What I'm going to do though is give the top a bit of a, um, a lip, right? A ridge. So I'm going to go into face mode, select the top face, and then um, click extrude again and give it an offset. I'm going to hold down control so the slider doesn't move as fast. And then I'm going to drag this blue arrow up a little bit. All right. Let's go back into object mode, select our mesh, and let's open up the channel box. We have a bit of history here, so let's delete that history. And now let's give this a little bit more topology. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a quick remesh. Um, it has a nice effect in the sense that it can make the edge distribution a bit um, more even. So go up to mesh, remesh, and just going to reset this. Click Remesh, and then um, select the mesh again, delete history, and now we're just going to retopologize it. All right, I'm going to reset this for you guys. Uh, I'm going to turn on hard, Preserve Hard Edges. For target face count, I don't need very many for this first phase. You can choose 300, and for face uniformity, I'm going to bring this up to 1. That'll keep the faces as even as possible and click retopologize. There we go, pretty good distribution. Now what I want to do is displace some of these vertices to give it a rocky kind of look. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, tapping the space bar, and I'm going to go either into the side view or the front view, and I'm going to box select all these vertices. Let's go back to the uh, perspective panel, and up here we have this edit mesh uh, tab, click on that, and go down to transform and open up that option box. Just going to reset this. By default, it's at zero. It's This is sort of like a strength slider. So I'm going to drag this slider up around the midpoint and click transform vertex. Now what I want to do is pull this blue arrow out a little bit. right? And it'll pull it out in that local position. If you want for some reason to go into the uh, global, you'd click on this blue ball and it switches to global. But we were in the local. And then pull that um, blue arrow out until you get the look you want. Um, I like this. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go back into object mode, select the mesh. And this time, what I want to do is retopologize it again. So I'm going to delete the history. And what this next retopologize phase does is it redistributes this um, edge flow to better match our new mesh. So I'm going to turn off Preserve Hard Edges now. And for target face count, 
I'm going to choose a number that I feel is enough to capture this form. I think 5,000 should be good. And for face uniformity, I'm going to bring this slider back to zero. I want Maya to calculate and give the faces the size it needs to capture this form. So click retopologize. And after a few seconds, we have a new edge um, flow to better match this mesh. All right. Now what we want to do is something very similar to the other tutorial, the rock modeling one. We're going to um, triangulate it and then reduce it. So select the mesh, delete the history, and then open up your mesh tab, click triangulate, and then let's harden these edges. Click the mesh again, go to mesh display, harden edge, and let's have a look. I'm going to turn off wireframe unshaded, and it's starting to get that low poly look. So I'm going to select the mesh, delete history, and then now let's reduce this geometry. Open up the mesh tab, click reduce. And now all we need to do is drag this slider until we get the look we want. Let's take a look. Maybe a little bit more. And this is just a personal preference, right? Something that suits your own game. All right, I like that. Now what I want to do is um, just, just going to delete the history, but we can call this done. But what I want to do is maybe pull out the bottom a little bit and maybe, maybe pull out the side a little bit to make it a bit more random. So I'm going to select the mesh. I'm going to go into vertex mode. But if I try and grab the vertices like this, what happens is it grabs the ones on the other side. I don't want that. So I'm just going to click off that. I'm going to open up the modeling toolkit. We have this option here called camera based selection. Turn that on. And now if I grab these vertices, it doesn't grab the ones behind. So what I'm going to do is first grab the ones on the bottom. I'm going to press B on the keyboard to open up the soft selection and um, sorry, switch to soft selection. And if I hold down B plus the left mouse button and drag, um, it can increase or decrease that fall off. And then what I want to do is just press W to go into my move tool and bring this down a bit. Just drag a few more vertices and bring that down. There we go. And what I can do is uh, do the same maybe for the sides, just to give it a bit of a random look, right? Sometimes you want to do this because um, some of the processes are a little too mathematical. Here it's random enough that it's fine, but I just want to give that little bit extra attention, extra touch. All right, I think one more should be fine. Now let's take a look at our mesh. I'm going to go back into object mode. Um, one thing we want to do, or something we should remember is um, soft selection is still on, so I'm just going to turn that off. And also let's turn off camera base selection as well. Now let's go back into object mode. And let's have a look. And it looks pretty good. I'm going to give it a material that I had from earlier. It's nothing special. It's just a Lambert. So this will be the top. And then I'm going to go into face mode. Tap the space bar. Go into either the side or the front. Selecting all these faces, I'm going to give it the other material I had. And this will be the, rock, the rocky um, area. All right. And you can see without too much time and a process that um, has created this, we can use it to um, make rocky islands, platforms, or some type of landing for your character, right? And um, it's pretty easy and it's fun. So there you go. Hopefully um, this will help you guys out. All right, that concludes today's tutorial on floating platforms. Hopefully you found today's techniques useful. If you did, please consider leaving a like. Uh, helps this channel out a lot. We will see you in the next video. Until then, this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.